do you want to know what to do when the whole world goes south? Here's Michael Lutin, and he's going to tell you all about it. Hey, Michael. Hey, it's nice to be here, and I'm very excited about you coming up in May. Yeah, me too, me too. Do you know we're all trying to take a train? We're going to try to get our own car on the train on the UAC Express from New York to Chicago. If anybody's interested, they should really contact us. Yeah, so we've got, I, we've I, got several people now. I think you're going to come with us, aren't you? Well, I, I said I was interested, but I have to be there a few days earlier than everybody because uh, I'm doing pre conference workshop. Pre conference. Prince. Oh, too bad. Yeah, it's going to be great, though. Yeah, much earlier. Otherwise, I would be in. It's so exciting just to be with everybody on a train, going to you with That'd my be crazy with a celebrity, get get autographs from him and get some laughs. So that's exciting. That's a brilliant idea. It's, it's going to be fun if we can pull it off. And it, we don't need that many people. I think we only need about 50, 50 people to get our own car or something like that. If we can do it, it'll be great. But we're going to go a bunch of us anyway on the same car. Excellent. We're going to share that um, invite on Facebook so people can see who can join you guys. Michael, you are a celebrity in the astrology world. And a little bit, a few people don't know about Michael. He is um, a great astrologer. He is trained in uh, psychoanalytic psychotherapy. Michael is very creative. He does playwrights, he writes music, he writes books. He's a, a lecturer, entertainer, international speaker, astrological recanter, ambassador to Earth. That's the title I really like. Yes, and that's my favorite too. So that probably means that you speak to aliens a lot. Is that true? UAC itself, all the astrologers, we're all aliens. It's true though, yes, we are, we have alien minds, but between ourselves, we are a tight community who speak the same language, not the same language. Yes, I, 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 you know, I think that's one of the reasons I got into astrology. I always, I was a linguist in school, and I always wanted to find a language that everybody in the world could understand, and everyone in the universe could understand, and I actually, I actually was thrilled to find astrology because it's a language that Everyone on earth could really grasp without knowing uh, even how to say hello to each other. We can always understand each other through astrology. That's the great thing. And I think it's, it's expanding to the planetary society as well now. I agree. That's and another so, subject. That's another subject. Yes. And I know you do a lot to spread the word about astrology. And you have a very, very great and loving following. You have a lot of people who uh, love you for who you are as an entertainer and a brilliant man that you are. So tell us, uh, what happens when the whole world goes south? Well, the whole world is going south right now. It's going south literally because the uh, transit of Pluto is now about to conjoin in 2018 it's south node and when that happens it does seem like the world is going to hell because many dark forces are operating you know we see movies and read historical novels about oh ancient rome or ancient egypt or uh, napoleon or the russian czars we see all that through the lens of time and it's always with movie stars or fictional accounts in books and when we see it, it's glorified, it's removed from reality. It always has a certain Hollywood glow to it. And it never seems quite as real as it is to us right now. Because you, me, and every one of us, we are all experiencing the wackiest, the wildest, the never more experienced, the nuttiest possible, whatever you can imagine is happening. And not all of it is good because there's a lot of dark forces that are operating on the earth right now. And many, many uh, events are pulling us downward and we, it all seems like it's coming to an end. But it always seems that way when you're in the middle of a tremendous world revolution and world transformation. We've only seen it in books and movies. We are alive for that right now. So we are seeing it not from the lens of time or fiction or movies, we're actually experiencing it. 
So we're going through certain things that only the wildest people who imagine these things because we are at a complete total turn in human history. And it's not just the politics that we're observing. The, uh, transformation in politics and the world toppling of leaders that we are seeing is part of something that's much bigger, bigger than anything we've encountered, bigger than anything, not only in modern history, but in human history. Some huge turn is, is, is occurring. A lot of it is scary. A lot of it is dark, but there's so much more ahead for us. We have to go through a dark tunnel to get there, but there's so much more ahead for us that we could only now begin to imagine what could happen to humanity, not only the bad stuff, but what could really lie in, in the future for us, humanity. And that's what I really want to talk about at UAC. That's what I'm excited about, what's going on now, what is about to happen, the dark and the light. That's what I'm excited about, UAC. That's one thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm excited to be there to do it. It's big. It's weirder than you have ever could imagine. The yeah. thing that you think could never possibly be true is true, but it's being hidden from masses, but it's about to be disclosed. And that's what I want to talk about. Wow. Wow. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm actually shaking listening to you. <laughs> and yes, Michael Luton is going to be presenting his lecture when the world goes, when, when the whole world goes south, the unthinkable happens on Friday, May 25th at 2.30 p.m. You can't miss that. This is a one in a lifetime opportunity to hear straight from Michael what actually happens when everything goes south. Michael, you have another wonderful lecture that you're going to be presenting at UAC on Sunday, May 27th at 4.30 p.m. And that one is maybe just as intriguing as the first one. And it has to do with love. It's called The High Price of Love, Faded Emotional Attachments in an Impermanent World. Michael, the subject of love is very near and dear to me as I'm a, also a professional matchmaker. I know a lot about love, but your topic sounds very, very deep and exciting to me. Uh, can you tell me if you're gonna be telling us your life story? My life story? In love? That'd be a very fast lecture, I'm afraid. I think we better go into a deeper, I think we better go into something a little deeper, more interesting than my life. But seriously, you know, it is said that two people once they are able to openly negotiate their mutual sexual and emotional needs with each other, they have a happier and longer relationship that goes deeper and is more fulfilling. And says, well, that would be very easy, but it's not very easy because we are constantly inexorably drawn to people. And, you know, and sometimes the same sorts of people over and over and over, we have to figure out why could that be the case? And then there are problems that arise, and the problems that arise are the same problems, and that is that it's very difficult to negotiate successfully in a, on a mutual basis between two people what their real needs are. And as you get older, you realize that your needs become more narrow and more honest. But I'm only beginning now to understand the complexity of gender in terms of relationships and how we are fated to be drawn over and over and over into relationships with various people. I'm only beginning now to see the complexity of, of, of physical gender and emotional gender and astrological gender. Because you take a look at the difference in terms of masculine signs, if, if fire and air signs, or what are traditionally called female signs, earth and water. Can you see how the blend of those combinations can be so vast and, and, and varied that no one could ever predict the kind of behavior and the kind of needs that a person is going to have? And you also have the planets in detriment, the ancient and, the ancient and modern rulerships. You have the planets that, that can be in a detrimental sign, but a 
position uh, uh, along the horoscope wheel that is dignified or exalted. So the personal planets, Venus and Mars, for example, take Venus and Mars, they can be in such a complicated combinations. On top of that, you have the outer planets always affecting, and plus on top of that, you've got planets now that are being only now discovered that are, have longer uh, orbital re revolutions, and not only do they have longer re revolutions, but they affect the personal planets in an unconscious way. So I'm now only beginning to see and explore how gender is a much more complicated set of parameters than we ever dreamed. And I want to apply that to the simplest and personal relationships we always have. That's what I'm working on. That's what I want to do with you, Eck. Yeah, wow. It, it does sound like it's not your typical women are from Venus and men are from Mars kind of thing. Oh, no. It not at all. Especially now, especially now at what's going on in the terms of physical, emotional, and astrological gender. It's a whole brand new field, I think. And it's something that's interesting to all of us because we, wow. we all need relationships. Yes. We all need them. Very, very psychoanalytic of you, Michael. And um, when you mentioned the outer planets and the newly discovered planets, are you talking about asteroids and the Kuiper Belt? You, took, you see the you know, series is now, you have to put it in every horoscope. But there are planets, or planetoids, but whatever they call them now, uh, they have these bodies. There's one, there are two called Haumea and Makimaki and Two of, those are two of the outer ones, yes, but they have, they have wide revolutions, but they still have something to do, I believe, very strongly with fertility, gender, reproduction, wow. and the evolution of the species. And those are the things that we can't really wow, know about for years and years and years, but they now have to be inserted into our observations, astrological, and then as time goes on, we can unfold uh, and learn more about them. But we can see right now in the newspaper every day on TV that the ideas of gender are changing every idea we had about male and female. And it's interesting because you have to negotiate it. You have to be real about what you like and what you need. Otherwise, you're going to eventually end up in divorce court. Yes, very interesting. So you, you are talking about these trans-Neptunian objects. Also, it's very interesting, but we, it, it'll take 500 years before we get to really understand agreed. the cycle of said. Agreed, yeah. agreed. And we're just scratching the surface learning how powerful they are, and their power goes beyond the Plutonian power. They're going to uh, observe, and one of those bodies that's four billion miles away, I think from Pluto even, and that's going to happen on New Year's Day of 2019. Uh, so the uh, consciousness is constantly expanding. Every time a planet is discovered, our consciousness must grow to meet that uh, challenge that is presented to us as human beings. And that's artificial, artificial intelligence, mu as it, as it will, blend with human human form and human beings these are questions that are going to be arising not in 50 100 or 200 years but immediately and that's what we're looking at in terms of relationships agreed amazing so you're gonna take us to the much higher level that's what i hope i can do wow uh that's fantastic i'm looking forward to it and i'm looking Thank forward you. to everybody um getting together to act and learning entire new universe from each other i'll see you all in chicago yes uh, thank you michael thank you again and i hope a lot of people pop on the train and yeah me too i'm with you before the conference so i'll see i'll definitely see you soon sounds good i'll see you too thank you so much thank you